All right, so we have reached the last day, day four, the limits to fiscal policy. So this in this day, we're going to cover kind of the pitfalls where fiscal policy may uh, not work, or or what exactly needs to for what what exactly do we need to get right for it to really really jumpstart that economy? Bell ringer, what was condition one? What was the first condition for fiscal policy to work? From yesterday, from day three, answer, we need to be putting underemployed resources back to work. And so fiscal policy works best when it's responding to a demand shock, not a supply shock. All right. So to motivate this discussion of where fiscal policy might go awry, we have a thought experiment for the students. Million dollars to give to charity. What are you going to do? How are you going to spend it for the most good possible what is the plan talk through it have the discussion go as long as you want here are some questions to consider how are you going to identify the best charity how you know that this charity you know which of all these things what is going to have the best impact you know is it i don't know uh, a food bank or is it um you know malaria uh cures and uh in a developed de developing country something like that how are you going to make sure that the money is not wasted how are you going to make sure that the you know a corrupt um, charity uh, doesn't abscond with the money. Kind of oversight. You're going to save some money back for oversight. So this is, you know, actually much harder um, than we might think. How are we going to spend this money to do the most good? How long do you think it would take? You know, again, you got to do some research to figure out what the best charity is. You got to do some oversight. Um, you got to have some meetings, maybe. Might take a while. And what if you had to convince 400 people that this was the best way to do it? How long would it take now? You got to go give a presentation to the 400 people. The point of all this is it might take a while. But for fiscal policy to work, which is something similar, I mean, the government is spending money. The government's trying to identify those underemployed resources and spend the money on them. And for it to be effective, for the fiscal policy to be effective, it needs to be timely. It needs to get there when the money is needed. You know, if I'm unemployed or if the resources are underemployed, you think there's a group of workers that you know could be doing something good. But it takes me a year to figure out who those people are, you know, it's not going to do much good. Maybe the economy's already recovered by then. Okay. Now to, to help illustrate this, we have a video. Play the video, pause it at certain points, ask questions. This is something that the video just sort of says, um, but I think it's worth clarifying because students may not understand what that means. An unemployed worker has low opportunity cost. Okay. What does this mean exactly? What this means is if I'm unemployed, opportunity cost of my time, like what I'm doing with my time is not that valuable. I'm not, I'm not doing much, right? Somebody who, who is doing something valuable, like a basketball player that's getting paid a lot of money or some you know high-priced lawyer or something like that that is very busy, their time is very valuable. They have a high opportunity cost. Okay. So an unemployed worker has low opportunity cost, meaning if we put them to work, we're not giving up much. They weren't doing that much with their time. Pause at 157, which goes through the sort of the checklist for timely spending. We got to recognize the problem. We have to get the, the Congress to agree to spend the money. We have to actually get that money to the relevant agencies. And then we have to make sure it's being effectively spent. All right. Uh, we have to do some oversight to make sure it's being spent. If it's not being spent, well, uh, go all the way back to one. So this is actually pretty hard. All right. Continue the video at 335. We identify what it uh, uh Automatic stabilizer is. Okay, so what an automatic stabilizer is, ask the students to try to think of one. There are things like unemployment insurance or taxes, which sort of automatically adjust. You know, you lose your job, you apply for unemployment insurance, boom, you get it. Uh, you know, you lose maybe your part-time job or your hours get dialed back, so you're making less money, uh, your taxes go down. So these automatically adjust. So you want to go through the go through what these are with the students, why they're good. They're good because they're timely. They're automatic. So they're timely because boom, they just kick in um, by themselves. Can we think of some other automatic stabilizers that don't exist or maybe that already exist that we didn't mention or that don't exist that maybe should exi exist? So this is just sort of, you can spend as much time as you want on this. This is just a chance for the students to be creative. Hey, think of something that, you know, uh, maybe automatically, some sort of automatic fiscal policy that we maybe haven't thought of. All right. Then we're going to go to condition condition three for fiscal policy to work well. So remember condition one, fiscal policy works best when we are responding to a demand shock. 
Condition two, it needs to be timely. And condition three, it needs to be targeted. So it needs to actually get to those underemployed uh, resources. Okay. So why might that, why might this not work? Why might we, you know, what are some potential pitfalls to spending the money? Ask the students, continue the video. And we're going to end the video at 442. And the video will go over some of these potential pitfalls. But one, we may have a skill mismatch. Our unemployed workers may not be right for the project that we want to undertake. We may not, ha not have any good projects. You know, as the government, we may not have anything that's sort of what's called shovel ready, like ready to go. There may be corruption. So, you know, officials may abscond with money. They may siphon the money off to their allies, family members. You know, we see many examples of these. Okay. So these are how the spending might go wrong. Even if it's timely, it may not be targeted or it may be, you know, diverted away. Now we could just do tax cuts and we could just do, you know, give people money that, you know, to, to uh, you know, give them money directly. Okay, now the problems here, there may be fraud. I remember when I uh, got my house in the pandemic, uh, it was empty for a while. Um, the person and some random person was using it to, perpetuate all sorts of unemployment fraud. They were getting unemployment checks from about six different states that were all coming to my house and they were breaking into the mailbox to get their checks. So the fraud does exist. Um, another way this may go wrong is it may be too broad. You know, remember the pandemic, you know, sort of those checks kind of went out to everybody. Um, but maybe some people, you know, to, didn't, didn't need it. Or maybe if we think of a national policy, but the uh, downturn is regional. So we're spending money nationally, but really we, we should be targeting the money to the regions that are most affected. And then finally, if we're doing sort of a, a, a tax cut or spending people money, the, the whole idea is they're going to spend that money where the money is needed. They're going to spend the money. And by spending the money, that's going to get those underemployed resources back into production. You know, let's say our restaurants are all shut down. They're going to spend the money going out to eat, say, and that's going to bring the restaurant industry back. But if they just save the money, then it's not going to have any effect. Okay. All right. So to summarize our three conditions, fiscal policy works best when it's responding to a downturn, uh, a, 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 um, a demand shock. It has to be timely and targeted. So it has to be targeted at the right resources and get there in time. So the activity or interactive that we designed to teach this is called the fiscal policy slot machine. A little different because it's not one you can win and it's not one where you really get a score. So really you, you wanna pair this with the student activity sheet, which asks them to do this multiple times. So if we spin the fiscal policy slot machine, again, so this is designed to illustrate the difficulties of fiscal policy, how many things have to go right for it to really work. And in this case, you're gonna hit the jackpot if it, if it goes right. So let me just spin it here, let's see what happens. So the first reel is what the downturn was. So there's a tech crash. Okay, so this is actually demand shock. All right, that's good. The policy spending. Okay, I'm going to spend some money, but it went awry because it wasn't targeted enough. There was a skill mismatch. Okay, so then this has the details. So all right, economies and tailspin. We're going to spend some money, but the unemployed tech workers don't know how to build the bridges. So we have a skill Mismatch. Almost all of these, so there's, I think behind the scene, there's about 21 different versions that it can go. We'll have like a real world um, example that the students can read about. All right. And so on the student activity sheet, it would say, all right, describe the scenario. So they say, okay, this is what happened in the fiscal policy slot machine. It didn't work. I didn't hit the, I didn't hit the jackpot. And what condition wasn't fulfilled? Well, in this case, it was condition three. It wasn't targeted correctly. All right, we spin again. See what happens now. We got animal spirits, direct payments. Oh, mistargeted. Okay. I'm not sure why there's confetti because this is not, <laughs> it's actually being, uh, so this, I'm recording this the week before it comes out. So, all the, you know, it hasn't, hasn't quite been tweaked. So I don't know why the, ignore the confetti. The confetti should only come if I hit the jackpot. I did not hit the jackpot. Again, the prop where it went wrong is condition three. It was mistargeted in this case. All right. So if uncertainty about the future, I'm going to give people some money, but um i give them it's too broad i give it to rich employed people and they just save the money okay again based on a real scenario so this is based on real research where there was too much saving oops all right let's go back here let's see if i can hit the jackpot eventually so if we can get one where we hit the jackpot i think one there's three out of the 21 so one out of every oh here i, I think i did it oh no there's a supply shock sorry so condition one is not 
matched here. It messes up supply chains. Okay. I provide relief, but um, uh, so this one is timely and it is targeted, but it's not going to restart the economy because the underlying problem is war. Seeing if I'm going to be able to hit the jackpot again on their so on their sheet they would for that one they would put condition one wasn't satisfied. I got a housing trust. Looks like I oh it looks like I did. I get I hit the jackpot. Here we go. All right. So I spent. I was timely. Okay. I went and I employed those construction workers who were underemployed. I hit the fiscal policy jackpot. There I go. So I hit all the I hit all the conditions. Responding to a demand shock, um, timely and targeted correctly. Okay. All right. So again. This one's just kind of for fun. There's no right answers, but it works well with the student activity sheet where they have to fill in what condition didn't work. Did I, oh no, this is a supply shock again that I messed up on this one. All right, cool. Okay, all right, so last word. So that's sort of a capstone. Hopefully through that fiscal policy slot machine, they're seeing how difficult it is to, to get it right, all the different ways it can go awry, and again, there will be real world examples. They can click on a link, I think on almost everyone that has the real world example. And so hopefully it illustrates how to do fiscal policy and how to do it right. Hopefully they understand that by the end of this second day on the fiscal policy policy side, remember the first two days are on spending and uh, revenue taxes. Final word. So if we do expansionary fiscal policy, okay. The problem is you got to roll it back at some point. You know, you spend a bunch of money, get the economy restarted, but you got to roll it back. Nobody likes to roll it back. So the political economy here is difficult. So we have the statistics to show this. Everyone thinks the deficit's a problem, right? 77%, not everyone, but the majority of Americans say, hey, we're spending too much money, but they don't want higher taxes. No one wants higher taxes and nobody wants and nobody wants to spend less. So you look, the, the, the public thinks we should be spending more money. They think the taxes sh should be lower, but the deficit's a problem. So this is just illustrates the political economy where no politician really wants to either raise taxes or lower spending. And so the problem with expansionary fiscal policy, it just kind of keeps going. All right. A little bit of retrieval practice here at the end. Write down the three conditions for fiscal policy to be successful. If you haven't already done so, please get our free fiscal policy unit. There should be a link on screen. We have plenty of videos at MRU, more highly produced than this, that are designed to teach economics. So check out one of our many other videos. And thank you. All right. I'll see y'all.